So another release candidate of .NET just landed a couple of days ago and it includes support for a brand new runtime capability, multi-threading for Blazor WebAssembly. Multi-threading in .NET is nothing new, but bringing parallel workloads to Blazor WebAssembly opens up a whole new can of worms. Although multi-threading support for Blazor WebAssembly is only expected to land in .NET 8, we can try out this experimental bits in the latest .NET 7 RC2 release. Right, so now let's quickly check it out. Um, so I've got my terminal open and what we want to do is first of all you want to install the new workload, the experimental workload for this WASM experiment. You do that by going .NET workload install and the name is WASM-experimental. I've already done so and you can check out the workloads that you have installed by just going .NET workload list and in there you will see I've got number 7 RC2 source installed uh, called WASM Experimental. Right, so once that's done, it now exposes a new template called uh, WASM Browser. So it's .NET new WASM Browser. I'm just going to output that to multi WASM and then uh, CD into that directory. And let's go and see what is inside of there using Visual Studio Code. Once that's loaded up, we see a bunch of things. And the first thing that we want to do is here is we want to be able to add a NuGet package to this uh, application. Uh, we do this by going .NET, add, package, uh, it's a pre-release, and it's called Microsoft Net Web Assembly threading. That will add the pre-release of the Microsoft WebAssembly threading NuGet package to the application. All right, so now we, now we have that. Going to our csproj file, we now need to also add a property group. The property group that we need to add is wasm enable, I think it's called threads, and we need to make that true very importantly, right. In our CS program file, here we can basically remove the my class. We won't be needing the my class feature here. And let's do some code here. Let's say hello from main thread. Like that. And um, what we also wanna do is we wanna also just tell it it is an assembly. It's only supported for the browser. So it's OS or it's supported OS platform, it's for the browser. Now, let's quickly create a new thread. So we do that by static void, let's call this awesome thread. And then we can just maybe write out there, hello from awesome thread. The cool thing is now, um, to make this thread work and to see the effect. Now let's quickly write out a bunch of numbers to that. Uh, let's ask Copilot, generate 10 random numbers. Let's see what happens. There we go. Now it says the random number is da 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 and it is like so. And we also can now just put in the thread dot sleep and that should do the trick of doing it every second. We also now need to uh, add a bunch of references on top here. So what I want to do here is, is include system.threading. And I believe it's also uh, including system.runtime.versioning. Uh, right, that is the case. I'm just going to fix that uppercase S there. Now we have an awesome thread. We can also include the current threads as um, manage thread ID. So now let's for instance say hello from awesome thread. Uh, we say, okay, it's from ID. It's thread dot current thread. 
dot, I think it's managed thread ID. Just to kind of print the managed thread ID out of the thread. Okay, that's about it. And uh, we now also need, now need to call this thread, right? So in this case, we say new thread and we say, okay, it's uh, awesome thread. And we need to kind of start that thread going forward like so. So running this as is will give you an error um, if you remove the, 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 the code uh, in the template. Um, one of the things that I've realized is uh, it won't run because it crashes. And it crashes here where it sort of expects to find this my class. So what you can do is you can just literally delete these lines from the, the JavaScript file and that, sh that should kind of do the trick. Once everything's done, we can now just run it by going .NET run. And that should give us a URL to play with. Now, taking this URL, putting this in a browser, look what happens now to the console window. We see now that random numbers are generated. Uh, and it's also generating according to the thread here, which is quite cool. So now we have multi-threading running in a Blazor application. This is basically it and multi-threading in a nutshell. Uh, if you like this content, please subscribe to my channel down below and also remember to click the little bell icon to be notified the next time that I post new content. All right, so that is basically it. A few caveats that you need to remember uh, is that it creates a pool of max four web workers uh, to execute your .NET threads and your application cannot exceed four of those threads. Another thing is that the synchronization context um, is used by the browser by default. So if you do not use configure await false, uh, they will schedule on the browser thread. This multi-threading feature also requires that you enable the cross-origin isolation um, by serving COOP and COEP headers in your request. It is also possible to use head of time compilation by using the property run AUT compilation and WASM enable SIMD uh, in this multi-threading uh, feature. Also, when you're working with JS import and JS export, it will only be callable from the main browser thread. Just like WebSockets uh, are also called from the main browser thread. And last but not least, debugging. Unfortunately, it's not supported right now, but hopefully we will see that soon in the future. All right, that is it. Thank you so much for watching and remember, subscribe to my channel and let's see you next time.